grade 8 students, how are you all doing today? I know you're very excited for our next lesson. So, welcome to our Science 8 Quarter 3 Week 1. For today's lesson, we are going to talk about the particle nature of matter. So, what are you waiting for? Get your pen and paper and your self-learning module. And together with me, Sir Yong, let's discuss and explain the properties of solids, liquids, and gases based on the particle nature of matter. Learning science is fun, knowledge for everyone. Learning science is fun, knowledge for everyone. Learning science is fun, knowledge for everyone. Learning science is fun. At the end of our lesson, you shall be able to Describe what is matter Distinguish common properties of matter Differentiate characteristics of matter from non-matter Demonstrate how a mass is measured And recognize the importance of the things that surround us Isn't it interesting? Yes, I know! Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass My dear grade 8 students, I know you can easily define what matter is because you memorize it since your early elementary days. But today, we are going to refresh our learning and try to remember what matter is. Very good! Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. It has its own characteristics and properties. Properties Aha! Uh -huh. There are properties of matter. Can you tell me what are these properties? Very good! We have six properties of matter. And today, we are going to define them one by one. The first property of matter is mass. It is a measure of the amount of matter the object has. You can measure the mass of sample of matter using a balance or a weighing scale. The next property is volume. It is the measure of the space occupied by an object. The third one is physical property. It is a characteristic that can be observed without changing the substance. Examples are appearance, color, odor, and density. The fourth one is chemical property. Describe the characteristic ability of a substance to react to form new substances. Examples of chemical property are flammability, reactivity, and acidity. The fifth one is intensive property. It depends on the type of the matter, not the amount present. Examples of intensive property are temperature, density, and hardness. And the last property of matter is extensive property. It depends on the amount of matter in the sample, just like size, length, and weight. Do you know that all matter is particulate in nature? That means that matter is made up of tiny bits of material known as a particle. And learning about what matter is made up of involves dealing with very small particles beyond what our naked eyes can see. According to Leucippus and his disciple Democritus, they believe that the nature consisted of two things atom and the void that surrounds them. They believed that atoms are physically, but not geometrically, inseparable. For Democritus, atoms are indestructible and fully full, so there is no empty space. While Democritus named the particle atom from the Greek word atomos, meaning inseparable. 
Many years later, scientists added Democritus' idea. The theory they developed is termed as particle model of matter. And these are the four main ideas of particle model of matter. You can follow the figures of the particle model of matter on your weekly learning activity sheets. Number 1. All matter is made up of tiny particles, as you can see on figure 1.A. While figure 1.B says that the particles of matter are always moving, those tiny particles are moving. Figure 3 says that the particles have spaces between them, while figure 4, adding heat to matter, makes the particles move faster. Were you able to follow me? Very good! That was the particle model of matter. I know you're very familiar with the terms atom, molecule, and ion. Yes, these are particles. Over two centuries, John Dalton gave concrete evidence that all matter is made of very small particles. And those particles are the ones I mentioned earlier, atoms, molecules, and ions. Atom is the smallest particle of an element that has all the properties of the element. Molecule is a neutral particle consisting of two or more atoms combined in a specific arrangement. An example of this is a molecule of water that consists of an oxygen atom combined with two hydrogen atoms. Atoms of the identical element may also continue to form a molecule. Ion positively charged or negatively charged particle. Atoms are too small to observe and the size of an atom is measured in angstroms. One angstrom is a unit of length equivalent to one ten millionth of a millimeter. You can check pictures from figure 2 of the atom and molecule. Sir, I have a question. How can we view and scan the surface if those particles are very, very small? Wow, that's a very good question. To view and scan the surface of very small particles like atoms, we need to use STM or Scanning Tunneling Microscope. This produces an extremely enlarged image and permits scientists to view and scan the surface of small particles. This can enlarge an image of up to 10 million times. Imagine! The STM creates a profile of the surface of an atom and then a computer-generated model or contour map is formed. A tree, air, stone, and animals are called matter because they occupy space, has mass, and is made of atoms. How about light, sound, heat, and electricity? What are they called? Very good! They are called non-matter. They are concepts and things that do not have mass and neither take up physical space. Non-matter objects usually do not carry a scent, nor can be tasted or touched. Several forms of energy are typically considered to be non-matter. And again, examples of those are light from the torch, heat from a fireplace or sun, and the sound of a police siren. That was the difference between matter and non-matter. Now the next question would be, how is mass being measured? On your weekly activity learning sheet, figure 3a, 3b, and 3c shows the different instruments in measuring mass. Figure 3a shows a triple beam balance. Figure 3b 
shows an electronic scale and figure 3C shows a weighing scale. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter of a substance or an object. The basic SI unit for mass is kilogram, kg, and it is the highest unit of mass that is used to measure heavier objects. How about light objects? How are they measured? Grams, g, is a small unit of mass used to measure light objects. To measure mass, we need to use balance apparatus. In laboratories, mass can be also measured with a triple beam balance or an electronic balance. In the market, mass can be measured with a weighing scale. The mass of an object is a measure of how heavy or light the object is. Now let's proceed to your most awaited part, our activities. Let's get to know how much do you learn from our lesson. Our activity one is entitled, What Matters Most? In this activity, you will describe what is matter. What you need is just a pen and a paper. You will draw a smiling face inside a box on your weekly activity learning sheet if the statement is true about matter and sad face if it is not. Let us start. Number 1. Scientists developed a theory based on Democritus' idea about matter. Is it a smiling face or a sad one? Very good! You will draw a smiling face because the scientist indeed developed a theory based on the idea of Democritus about matter. Number 2. Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. Great! This is a smiling face. I know it's very easy for you because matter is anything that occupies space. Number 3. Based on a particle model of matter, the particles of matter aren't always moving. It is a smiling or a sad face. Wonderful! It is a sad face because the statement is not true. Based on a particle model of matter, the particles of matter are always moving. Number 4. All matter is particulate in nature. Great! This statement is true, so you will draw a smiling face on the box. And lastly, number 5. Adding heat to matter makes the particles move slower. A smiling or a sad face? Wonderful! A sad face, because the statement is false. Adding heat to matter makes the particles move faster. Congratulations! You got all the correct answers for our Activity 1. Now let's proceed to our next activity. Our next activity is entitled, Match My Properties. In this activity, you will only distinguish common properties of matter. And still, you only need a pen and a paper. Match the words from column A with its definition found in column B. Are you ready? Let's begin. Number 1 is volume. What letter do you think defines volume? Nice! It's letter C. Volume is the measure of the space occupied by an object. You got it right. Let's have number 2. Chemical property. What letter defines chemical property? Very good! It's letter A. Chemical property is a characteristic ability of a substance to react to form new substances. Number 3. Mass. What letter defines mass? Very good! Mass matches letter B. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter the object has. You got it correct. Number 4. Physical property. What letter matches the word from number 4?
Very good. Number four matches letter D. Physical property is a characteristic that can be observed without changing or trying to change the substance. Number five is extensive property. What letter do you think matches number five? Great! Number five extensive property matches letter F. Depends on the amount of matter in the sample. And lastly is intensive property. Great! It's letter E. Intensive property depends on the type of matter, not the amount present. Wow! I'm glad to know that you learned a lot just by having matching properties. Very good! We're not yet done. Let's have Activity 3, Matter or Non-Matter. In this activity, you will differentiate characteristics of matter from non-matter. Very easy, right? What you need is just a pen and a paper. On your weekly activity learning sheet, Put a check mark under the appropriate column in the table that classifies the examples being listed as matter or non-matter. The first one is done for you as shown on your weekly learning activity sheet. Number one is water, and the check mark is placed on the matter box. You try number two, air inside the ball. Is it a matter or non-matter? Very good! Air inside the ball is a matter. Number three, sugar granules. Is it a matter or non-matter? You got it correct. Sugar granules is a matter. Number four, light. It is a matter or non-matter? Very good! Light is non-matter as we discussed earlier. And the last item is sound. Is sound a matter or non-matter? Very good. Sound is a non-matter. Wonderful. You have easily answered and differentiate characteristics of matter from non-matter. Let's have the last activity for this lesson, measuring mass. In this activity, you will demonstrate how a mass is measured. All you need is a pen and a paper and weighing scale if available. You will analyze the samples in Table 3 as shown on your weekly learning activity sheets. Does each sample have measurable mass? Prove your answer by measuring the mass of each sample using a weighing scale. Write your answer in Column 2. Sample 1 is sugar granules. How is its mass determined? Number 2 is a glass of water. Number 3 is a stone. Number 4, the heat. And number 5, air inside the ball and a balloon. Very good! You got it all correctly. Now on another sheet of paper, try to answer this question. What do you think will happen if there is no air in the surroundings? Write your answers in 3 to 5 sentences. And that's the end of our lesson today. Don't forget that matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. I hope that you can now describe what is matter, distinguish common properties of matter, differentiate characteristics of matter from non-matter. You can now demonstrate how a mass is measured and you can recognize the importance of the things that surround us. My name is Teacher Young, and that's the end of our lesson for today. I hope you had fun. See you again next time on our Science 8 lesson.